Now we're talking. There we go. Hello. That's it. Come on. Flipping heck. Right. I'm in bloody Toronto, aren't I? Um, let's just talk about some stuff. Um, I've made loads of nice pictures for you, and I want to talk about all my pictures. So my talk is called Graft, Craft, and Being Daft, and that's kind of what I want to talk to you about this morning. It is this morning, isn't it? Like, I'm still a bit, I'm still a bit confused. It is, it is morning, and it's Sunday? Sunday, Sunday. So, like, you're already sort of, like, mellow, and you're a little bit sleepy, and you're probably not normally woken up yet, but I want to kick start this conference, man. This is a massive, massive honour to be here. So, I just want to talk to you about stuff I do, stuff I love, the way I work, and just, just hopefully, you know, th this is, I, I, I just want to get excited by you guys. I want you guys to be into this whole conference and stuff, so let's just talk about some stuff. So, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's really exciting. It's really exciting. Look at these little things. Oh, it's too much. I like it. It's really good. Um, so, hello. Yes, Toronto. I'm, I'm, from, I'm from Bristol. Bristol in the UK. I don't think there's anyone else here from Bristol. Um, but it's quite a long way away. It's like 3,000 miles that way or something. Travelled all the way here. Yeah, I think it is, it's probably just over there. I think you take a left up those escalators. Take a, take a left on King Street, is it? It's just down the bottom there. Um, so that's where I live and I love it. And it's Bristol in the UK. It's kind of it's famous for quite a few things. It's, it's not the big bad capital like London. It, it, it's, it's very sort of different to that. But it's kind of got its own vibe going. There's a lot of sort of cool stuff happening. Um, Banksy, for one of them, is the sort of prodigal son of Bristol, and his his work just lines the streets, and, and and everyone like feels like this sort of like proud parent, which is really exciting. And it's just really nice that with that, there's this huge graffiti scene. There's a lot of guys. There's a lot of it. Sort of obviously started in New York, and then in it sort of graffiti saw its rise in the UK in Bristol in this relatively small city, which is kind of funny because everyone speaks with a bit of a weird, funny accent. Um, I'm not going to try and do it because it will literally be lost on you. It won't be funny. But trust me, it's hilarious down there. Um, but it's quite sweet and everyone wants just a bit mellow and sort of takes it easy. But it's got this, 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 this world that's just like, really into culture and art and just making stuff. Um, music. Music is a massive, massive thing. And it gave birth to the trip hop era as well. So Massive Attack, Portishead, Ronnie Size, all Bristol. Little fact, Ronnie Size is about this big. He's tiny. Really tiny. I hope this isn't being filmed. <laughs> he doesn't know me. He doesn't know who I am. I'm not. It's fine. Um, but he's really tiny, so that's a small fact. If you take anything away from today, I hope it is that you know Ronnie Size, the drum and bass legend, but a tiny gentleman. Um, also, more recently, George Ezra. So whether you like him or not, you know, sorry for that, but he's a big pop star dude as well. So, so it's really nice as this real sort of hotbed of people doing stuff, making stuff, making culture, but for no other reason than. They just want to make it. That's really nice. But also in Bristol is these two guys, which is Wallace and Gromit. And that's because the, the, the base, the HQ of Wallace and Gromit is Armand Animations. And that's where I fit into all this business. Um, so by day, I'm, I'm a senior designer for Armand Animations. And it's this lovely... I would say studio is probably the best word. It's a film studio. It, it, it does it does um, character work, does film feature films, commercials, does all sorts of stuff. Basically, it's like this amazing sort of amalgamation of forty years worth of work. And and I just get so like I can't actually kind of believe that I work there because like it's not a job. Like I get paid to colour in and make amazing stuff with these rad people that have spent their entire life making characters. Like, you know, when you were a kid and you'd just draw something on a page and you'd be like, this is my character, and you give it a crazy name, and then and that's normally where it, it, it ends. But this, they've made a whole business on it. They've made an empire on it, and I get so psyched on this. Because there's all sorts of different departments there. There's this, the feature film department that, that they're maybe most well-known for, so they make Wallace and Gromit films, um, which is an amazing sort of little, little story in itself, that basically these two schoolboy friends... Um, one of their dads owned a, a 60 mil Bolex camera and brought it home for them for, you know, just to look around with. They were like, you know, just young kids. And they realized on the side was this button. So if you, if you held it down, it would make movies, it would film on 60 mil. But if you just pressed it once, it would take a single still image. And so they sort of realized if they just then, like, take a picture on their, you know, the kitchen table and then move something, another picture, and move something again, another picture. Oh. I think this is called animation or something. 
And then, and then that was it. And that, that sort of started their, their rise. They just did more and more things, and they would just do things just for fun. But then their dad worked for the BBC, big broadcasting house in the UK. Um, and they would, and, and they sort of knew that they were just doing stuff in their own time. And, and they knew, his dad knew that they were looking for just small little pieces of content, little things, and said, well, my son and his mate make some stuff. What, what, what do you think? So they sent them their animations. And so then they got a career as as professional animators, because they were just playing, they were just experimenting and just had no, nothing to hold them back. And then as they got more busy, got sort of, you know, started doing a lot more professional things, they started doing a lot of commercials, a lot of exciting stuff, um, they kind of needed more help. And then they'd heard about this, this young lad who was at a university up north, in the north of England, because Bristol was in the southwest, and they'd heard about this guy who, who was, you know, really promising, really, uh, really fantastic animator. And so they, they sort of offered a deal and said, look, how do you find if if you come and sort of help us, you know, with in you know work 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 with him, work with Arvin, we'll help you finish your your student film. So, okay, so this young lad comes and then they all start working together. Fantastic partnership. That student film that they eventually helped to finish was Wallace and Gromit's A Grand Day Out, which then went on to win an Oscar. And it's just like I, I can't I can't imagine what it was like for Pete and Dave, the two founders who who had brought Nick, Nick Park in and gone, worked out pretty well, actually. <laughs> you imagine that. Imagine you go and give someone that work experience and then they come over with a golden... Oh, that's amazing, right? You'd probably think you'd pinched it, wouldn't you? It'd be brilliant. Um, so it was just this... I really like that. It's just a very nice, organic way of working. They just loved something and wanted to continue. So that spirit is there, which I get really, really stoked on. And what I do sort of specifically is I'm senior designer for the digital team. So within the might of Armand, there's this there's a bunch of geeks all in a room and we just sort of, we basically take anything that Arvin makes, all the characters and the stories in the world, and turn them into things, turn them into digital things, that's games or apps or websites or just taking plasticine and turn it into pixels, essentially. That's sort of what, what, what I do. And it's, as I've been there, I've been there nearly eight years now and I just, oh, I just love it, man. I can't, I can't get my head around it because I was just this 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 young lad from Leicester in in the middle middle of the UK. There's not an awful lot going on creatively, and it, it, it didn't really it wasn't an exciting city. It didn't really have anything going. Um, so for me to sort of bumble my way down and then fall to Bristol, a city that I loved, and then just sort of ended up. What what? How am I here? What I don't I don't understand. I don't I don't get it. But I love that. I I try not to be. Um, I never, ever want to take that for granted because I'm just stoked, like super, super stoked. But over the years, I've just really tried to be as involved as I can in this place. Like just, you know, when you just love something and you just really dearly just want to be involved and to help and to learn and to just be, just want to be a good person, you know? You just want to be into what they're making. So over the years, I've just tried to be involved in as much capacity as I can. And so recently, a couple of years, about a year back, actually, we redesigned the whole of armor.com um, and I was fortunate enough to be the designer that did it and, and I don't know, it was having the responsibility to take this, this company that's made 40 years work, how do you show 40 years worth of work, how do you show the stuff that people know but not rely on it, but the stuff that people don't know but also don't want to scare them off because you want to reassure them that you know what you're doing with the, the stuff that people do know, but also you want to say, but don't just think of us for this, think of us for this. So it's like this really sort of quite complicated problem to sort of have and to show, and it was just, well, I say problem, it's not problem, that's the brief, you know, it's, it's, it's never a problem, it's just what is the solution going to be? So just, just having, having that, it was just it's so flipping exciting, man. Um, and then, then that rolled into the, the, the words of rebrand. Now, everyone was a little bit scared at work to say the word rebrand, because well, that means a lot of time, it's a lot of cost, it's a lot of like, what do you mean, Reba? What, what are you just going to throw everything out? What? What? But what was really nice is we sort of designed the website, made that all look nice, and then the powers that be were like, oh, but the website didn't really match the printy stuff. Do you think the printy stuff should match? We were like, oh, well, you probably changed one or two bits. Yeah, yeah, so it was amazing. So we got a rebrand through. Um, and that was just really, really lovely as well. And again, how do you showcase 40 years' worth of work and... and, 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 and show it off uh, sort of accordingly and you just literally throw everything together and I quite like that we went around the houses of all these design really methodical design approaches of well actually if this represents this and this, it was just like actually whack everything on the page everything 
every day. And it just really worked. It was really nice. But that was totally an idea that I didn't think would work. But you know, you just think, oh, I'll entertain it. I'll just, I'll do it. I'll do it to, to satisfy my own brain that it won't work. But then you're sort of going, <laughs> but then you're like, but if I just literally threw everything on a page, what does that say about me as a designer? Okay, but don't tell anyone that. You just, you, that's when you bring out the fancy design words and go, well, this is a carefully curated um, <laughs> cross section of, <laughs> like, you literally just opened Photoshop and went, ah! <laughs> it works, man, it works. There's, you know, I hate the process, it's fine. So that was really, really lovely and it was really important to, I just wanted to try and bring a sense of fun and a sense of, well-being and just the, the, the spirit, the things when I watch Arbonne Productions, as I'm still a massive fan, is, is the, the warmth and the humility and the, and the tactility and the just general niceness, you know, the lovely vibe. So it was just like, what can we do on, on a relatively small budget to make people enjoy things? So it was just really simple, like we just got some die-cut stickers of um, made sort of traditional Arbonne eyes and an Arbonne set of mouths. And so that meant that anyone in the company, whether they were creative or not, um, could any package or any physical thing that they would send out, they can turn it into an album character. And the difference between just getting a normal brown envelope that's just got a normal stamp on it versus a bright red envelope that on the back is, a, is, is big googly eyes and a smiley face, you know, it just, it makes people feel like they're getting something. I mean, I kind of hope that like, no one got their, you know, P45 sat your sack letter in one of these lovely stuff like, hello, open me. <laughs> um, I don't think so. I'd be really insensitive, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'd really so But it was really nice to just do all that things and to just, I don't know, just try and get that sense of spirit. You can't really see it here, but all the compliment slips say, you look great. It's like you can't have a compliment slip and not pay them a compliment. That's just short. What the hell is the point of a compliment slip if you don't talk, you know? So it's just really nice to do those little, 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 little touches. It's the details. It's a tiny little bit extra that you go, I think, always makes a, always makes a difference to people. And it's just been really nice to sort of be indulgent on that and, and just do it. And then, just to my utter delight and surprise, I've managed to just work with lots of different types of departments there, because I've sort of not shied away from saying, hey, I'm a digital designer, but that's just the medium I work with by day. I, I can, you know, that, that applies to more than just pixels on a screen for, for a game or for an app. And so, Basically, I, I, I saw um, that they were advertising when they were making the Sean the Sheet feature film that they made a, a release this year, that they were looking for freelance um, graphic designers to join the crew because traditionally a feature film crew is, is generally freelance. You've got a few core staff, then it, it like crews up to a massive thing, and then when the film finished, they then move on to something else. So I saw that they were asking for, for, for designers, and so I was sort of like sent, sent an email straight to the person that had posted the advert saying, you do know you've got graphic designer here, like, hello. <laughs> and, um, but that, they, they hadn't had that before. They hadn't, it's like, I'm saying, can you give me more work? Can I have some more work, please? Um, and it was lovely, and in the end, I just managed to work with the team. There's a, there's a whole sequence within, within the feature film that um, features um, graphic design, and it's the first time they'd ever done animated motion graphics within a stop frame film. Um, and it was, it was actually about a, a sequence where a character trends on the internet. And so by pure luck that I'd sort of put myself out there and they were like, okay, so Gav does graphics and he works on the internet. So do you know about the internet trending stuff? I was like, yeah, man. Cool. Do you want to do this bit? And it was lovely. It was just a real nice, natural bit of we want this sequence and you seem like you know about the stuff. Do you want to do the stuff? I was like, oh my God. Ah, yes. I had no idea to begin with. It was just truly terrifying. Like the workflow and the pipeline of it wasn't just like, here's some JPEGs. It's not really how it works on a film. I didn't, didn't know that at the time. It's quite a complex, convoluted thing of getting your Adobe Illustrator motion graphics sent to the motion graphics guy, which is then tracked into Flame, which is then something blah, 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 blah. And then like, we're in, in technical meetings with the directors and the, the tech team, and, and, and they're all talking and they're you know, telling you all this stuff, and you're going, mm, mm-hmm, mm, mm, mm. But it was lovely. It was such an incredible learning curve, and it's you know I'm exaggerating. It was I do I do sort of know what I'm doing. It, it was but it was it was nice to feel out of my depth. It was nice to but they're only a question or two away. You know it, that's that's merely the technical element. You you can grasp that stuff. Um, I felt really just blessed that they had the confidence to go. We've well, never worked on a feature before, but you know they saw it the same way. It's like you're still telling a story, and we need some visuals, and there you go. And oh man, it just. Like, one, you know, you've got those goals, like, you've got that list of the things that you want to do. And, like, feature film credit, for me, 
is up there. And I've flipping got one. I'm flipping. I'm not, obviously, I'm the second best Gavin. I'm not the best Gavin. <laughs> Gavin Lyons is, he's the Don, right? I'm just rubbish Gavin. That's what they call me now. Crap Gav, that's what they say. Um, but it was just amazing, man. Like, this means so much to me. And, and it's, and it, yeah, it's, it's a line of text on a thing. But to me, that means so much because it's just a, an area. It's a, it's, a, it's a new skill. It's a new set of skills. It's a new set of people to work with. And it just means so much. Like, and that's the sort of thing you tell your mum. Like, mum, I've got my name in a film. She knows what that is. If I try and explain to her, oh, we're actually doing this HTML5 game that's actually, um, there's a cross-promotion with a whatever, she'll be like, hmm, I don't know what you're talking about. But mum, my name's in a film, gets it, totally gets it. So it's really, really nice. It's really nice to have that. Yeah, it's just flipping exciting. I just, I just, you know, you just want to chase those things, don't you, just constantly. Because if you don't want to chase them, then... Wait, what's the point of being creative? You know, we've got this amazing, um, I think you get that fire inside you that you just want to run after things and, and, and uh, you just, with wild eyes, you just want to grab it and then you, you've done it and then you go, oh my God, now what? But then, without even sort of thinking about it, you are just a dog sort of chasing cars. You then just see something else and you chase. And I love that feeling. I feel like it's exciting. But that's what I do in the day. And then at night, I just, I'm just a bit of a creative idiot, really. I just, I just love... I love trying my hand at absolutely everything and anything because, again, it's like the, the mediums or the styles or the techniques, they, they aren't really boundaries that are inaccessible. That's just stuff that you want to do. They're just, I want to make that picture but in a different style or I want to make that picture and it's projected on a different thing rather than a screen. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, not that, it's not that different. It's all just terminology, really, semantics. That's, that's all it is. So I go, anything that I don't get, you know, don't get a chance to exercise during the day... I just love going home at night, just trying my hand at everything. And I've done this since I can remember. I, I, I never went to university or college. I'm confused with what it is over here, but I'm not smart. I didn't go to the smart place, let's call it that. Um, because I just kind of wanted to get into the industry. I just was, was hungry for it. I, I wasn't, I'm, I've never been academic. I just, I just knew I liked making things and just wanted to get in. So I sort of joined a, 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 a design studio as a junior designer when I was 17 years old knew literally nothing but just spent those years I would during the day I would be taught things and I, I learned how to be a web designer because I was a junior graphic designer but then they said you want to be a web designer okay <laughs> well that is but yeah go cool, that's it um so I learned that during the day but then there was still so much that you know is not satisfied during the day that I just come home and, and just try and just play and just for 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 Sometimes for reason, for a collaboration with a friend, or for my own thing, or just a silly idea, which I'll show you in a sec. But first, I'm going to have some water. Hang on. I'll let you look at pictures. Oh, skip. Hang on. Hang on a minute. I'm going to tell you about some stuff. <laughs> anyway, hello. Um, so, like, I just like doing lots of different stuff, and it just whatever really interests me. So, like, top right, the Make It logo was a Actually, a thing at work that I really loved. It was branding for a, um, for an interactive game making piece of software that we made for the BBC. But then underneath that is some some save the date cards from my dear friend's weddings. For bottom left is a graphic t-shirt graphic for a um, for a conference in Aberdeen that we spoke at. Um, next to that is a campus pool logo which a friend's taken over a old abandoned indoor swimming pool and is turning it into a concrete skate park. It's like that's the best brief ever. Like, mate, I'm taking over an old abandoned concrete swimming pool. I'm going to turn it into a concrete skate park. Do you want to do the logo for it? Yes. See you later. Bye. <laughs> like, of course, of course, of course, of course. Have you got any time? No, but I'll make time. And like, let's just do it. Let's smash this. What an amazing thing. So, like, the black and gold thing is a, a pattern for my upcoming wedding, which is the best project ever. Just gets inside everything. I love it. Um, and then just sometimes I get dead political in that. And then this was a graphic um, for um, for a, a comic actually that was asking to. Do an illustration based on um, a current news event, and because um, um, the recent stuff in America, obviously, just people being shot. Or just stop shooting people. It's not that difficult, is it? You might get too political, but I never shot anyone. It's not that hard. Don't do it. Anyway, but that, that was my attempt at a graphic, trying to be a bit more political. Um, but yeah, just all sorts of stuff, really, and I just wh whatever takes my fancy. And I love trying different sort of styles and. And then that's just rolled into characters as well. I just, I think it's the, the excitement of being at Auburn as well, surrounded 
in a place that people just create characters from, from nothing to something. They give life to something. I find that really exciting. And just being a kid, you know, just watching cartoons and just being in that world, I just sort of love it. So I just try and do it myself. I seem to can only draw something that's got two dots for eyes and is a droplet shape. I haven't really seen to expand past that. <laughs> I try. I really try. And then it always just comes back to that bloody shape. And I can't. That's all right. I've made my peace with it. I've never, I basically, I just can't draw legs. So uh, I'm just not going to draw legs. <laughs> it's fine. But then if you actually, if you watch anything that you love, there's, there's definitely, you can tell people are doing something because they, it fits their style or, or whatever. And then you just feel all right about it. It's like, it's, it's fine. I'll just draw droplets forever. But I just really like that as well, just trying to learn and just, you know, do this stuff at home. And then seeing where that can go as well. Just you, you make it because you want to make it. And then where does that go? Where does this project go to? Um, and then I fell into toy design, which I absolutely adore. And it's, I kind of really literally fell into this stuff. I just, I love toys. Um, and I saw, I had a, I used to, back in the days of MySpace, I had a MySpace and I didn't have it about me, I had it about my work and I just, you just use, use and abuse any network basically just to put my stuff out there just because I wanted someone to look, you know, just I was proud of it, I was proud that I'd managed to create something. This is the thing, right, when, if you set the bar really, really, really low, <laughs> it's really easy to jump over it. So when you do step over it, you're just so stoked that you made something because you've set the bar really low. I just really encourage that, just lower your standards. Really low, really low, because then you get this really lovely, like, elated feeling at the end of it, so sweet. <laughs> so that's, again, another thing I want you to take over today, just lower my standards. But no, what I, what I genuinely mean is, is I, 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 because I wasn't particularly smart, I wasn't particularly um, gifted, I was always very mediocre at everything, at school, at anything I turned my hand to, and so that, that was nice, though, because it still means that you... I'm just amazed I can make anything. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's, it's that, that just personal accomplishment that's like, sweet, well, I've done this. It's not the world's greatest, but it's, I'm happy with it. It's mine, you know? I've made it, and it may or may not stand up to other similar things or whatever, but who cares about that? You can't, you can't, God, if you compare yourself, it's game over because there's, there's, there's billions of people on the planet and billions of them will be better than you. And that's just devastating. So don't think about it. Don't think about it. Just concern yourself with you and what you're doing. So um, I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> what was I talking about? Toys, toys, that's it, making toys. And um, yeah, so because I just would put this stuff online, I, someone sent me a message on MySpace years ago saying, hey, your weird little doodles would, you know, have you ever thought about making them into toys? I would love to, but I literally have no idea, no concept of how that happens. Um, and I sort of I had started collecting vinyl toys, sort of by accident. Well, well, basically, I, I found this shop in London, right, called Play Lounge. It was really rad. It was, it was literally like a toy store for adults, but it looked like a kid's store. It was amazing. Loads of cool vinyl, vinyl things. And I hadn't really discovered what these things were. I bought a bunch of stuff. So, man, these are amazing. But, you know, I'd sort of had a few, and then oh, I want more. I want more. I love these. They're like little statues, little pieces of art that I can have on my desk. What, how the hell do I get more? I was like, well, there must be you know, sites about it. There must be online stores. And I, I vividly remember going, well, how do I find it? Okay. Um, adult toys, Google. <laughs> I'm not joking. It's like, oh, <laughs> they're not called adult toys. I'll have a couple. <laughs> so it was like, um, so I, yeah, I learned about vinyl toys quite quickly. Ooh, <laughs> delete, delete. Um, I've got a topic again. What am I talking about? Toys. Um, so I just sort of fell into this world, and then I was partnering with a partner with a, a firm in Hong Kong that um, that was looking, looking, looking for someone whose style was very simple. Woo! And um, it sort of fitted their aesthetic, and so we we started making toys, which is this middle thing here. There's two sets of toys called droplets, and then that's just uh, just evolved as time's gone on. There's a there's a thing bottom right called Shirley Cream on the talk, which was just actually. Uh, a Colombian sculptor saw droplets and sent me an email saying, hey, I saw your toys. Do you, want to, do you want to work on something together, a little collaborative project? I was like, yeah, okay. So I think he was expecting me to send some sketches back of stuff that looked like droplets. But I just drew a girl in a parka jacket with a shit with wings on it and said, what do you think? <laughs> I'd have loved to see his face. But he just sort of went, wasn't what I was expecting, but all right. <laughs> so he made a range of toys which I love, and I, like, 
like make, I, I, I don't want to give any false impression, like, and then I make toys, and then they're a huge commercial success. No, they're not. I've got a frigging loft full of these bloody things. But it's like, that doesn't matter, man. And again, I, you start thinking about that, and you start looking at other people's things, and you're like, yeah, but they're a commercial success, and they do it. It doesn't matter. Make it for you, you know. Make it so you can fill your loft with stuff that no one buys, you know. It, it doesn't matter, does it? It doesn't really matter. That's still that sense of having a physical thing and just of um, pursuing something is, is a wonderful thing. So I've just tried, and I work with people like this dude on the left is a giant droplet. He's about uh, probably taller than that. So he's a really cool, just collaboration with a sculptor. Um, and then these are little jam factory little toys. And then that's a, a custom toy that someone else designed. Um, so it's just, I just, whatever's happening, whatever's happening in that world, I love, I love to, to get involved. And then, as well as toy stuff and illustration stuff and graphic design stuff, I just, I've just always loved film because that's the sum of all these parts. You know, it's, it's composition, it's design, it's pacing, it's timing, and it's, it's a really great way to learn storytelling and to learn, I think just to learn about film and moving image. Just sort of fell right into this and just loved it, and, and I got into it because when DSLRs came out, that would not only let you take beautiful pictures, they would also let you film beautiful things. And it looked really cinematic because you had like cinematic lenses on. So if you make it look cinematic, you want to make something cinematic. So I just just have tried my hands at different stuff, and I, I the biggest thing I made was probably a, a thirty minute documentary about bicycles in Bristol, and I had no clue what I was doing. But oh god, it was an incredible process just in the middle of it no idea what's going on but just with the the drive to just the drive to finish it if anything like no delusions of grandeur just i would like to finish this film you know i don't know where it's going to go from there on but i want to i want to do it so and then the beauty, beautiful thing is if someone like especially goes on your website and sees you did a thing they don't know that you struggled for the whole thing and made it up as you went along and you were just pulling your hair out um they don't know that. They see a thing. They see a finished thing. So they go, hey, do you make a thing? Do you want to make a thing with us? You're like, yeah, of course. I know all about the things. <laughs> you know, it's, so it's, it's just it's really nice. And obviously, you're honest. I'm, I'm saying these are collaborations with friends. This is not a, a professional thing. This is something I do in my own time. But it's what a wonderful way to learn is to just to go through that process again and again and again and again um, and just see what happens. But then that, that as you get better and better and more confident in yourself and you know what you can deliver and what you cannot, um, I've brought that to Ardman as well, so I've made a few films, mainly little documentary pieces, and, and one of them you saw earlier, um, a guy carrying more, the, the character more. Um, he's our head model maker at Ardman, just such a rad dude, and it was lovely. I got to make a short film about him um, creating creating a, a morph, and so it's just like that then puts me in a new position because I don't work with this guy who's called NT. I don't work with him normally. It's really nice to be part of that world and to see. So you never know where this stuff's really gonna really gonna take you, but. It's quite nice balancing that, that, you know, this is all personal stuff, and I'm just figuring it out as time goes on. But then in the future, I would love to do more and more. And then just working on the Shaun the Sheep feature, it was, you know, it's like, oh, this stuff just comes together. It's really, really nice. Um, so that's a little bit about me and the sort of stuff I do. And I want to I wanna talk you through the three different, three different strands of this talk. Stuff. Graph, graph. Just working, working hard, doing, doing it, doing the work. That's the thing. I think this is a common theme whenever you go to any conference, isn't it? It's like, really, you just got to do the work. That's, that's all there is to it. And I feel really passionate about that the, the, there are no shortcuts. There are no shortcuts. But I do want to give you some perspective. This is something I've been thinking about. And because it's really easy to get um, sidetracked with things. And I saw this, this image, it's, it's an image, um, I think it's, it's only recently been um, updated, if you will, it's a shot from the Hubble telescope of our galaxy. And what blows my mind is you see all those tiny little grainy things, like that's not digital grain on a, on a picture, they're, they're stars. What? They're, they're, what? That's st they're, they're like suns, sun stars for things. That's mind blowing, right? And when I see stuff like this, I just get so overwhelmed because you just sit at home going like on your computer just going what's the point oh yeah no no i remember why i got into this because i read an article about the the eventual death of the sun <laughs> and and i really really got into it and then my my fiance came home from work and was like listen listen so i found out that um the sun's about halfway through its life cycle it's going to die soon <laughs> what the hell of what <laughs> what are you talking about but 
I just get so into this this stuff, and, and, it, and my point, my point, which we'll become clear in a minute, I promise you, is is you get all these outside influences that sort of pull pull you and push you in different directions, and things to worry about, and whether it's on this almighty, massive, massive scale of worry, which is one day the sun will die and will all die. Um, but then I started reading a bit more about stuff and just found this stuff that really helps you put you in your place. And this quote, that you're a ghost driving a meat-covered skeleton covered in stardust. It's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I won't, I, won't, I won't worry about anything then, really. There's nothing to worry about. And it's what I mean by this is, is this, this is another diagram that I found that I found really, really important. Is Especially at the minute, in, the, in this age of, of constant news and constant information barrage, you, you are just overwhelmed. But the thing is, I found this amazing diagram of the circle of concern versus the circle of control. And what it basically means is the stuff in black on the left is the stuff that you're constantly bombarded with, that, that you're meant to worry about. The sex lives of celebrities and politicians, the economy, natural disasters, the weather, war weapons of terrorism, stuff like this, that you are just, you're worried. It's like, well, I don't, oh, I don't, I don't want to go to war. And, oh, God, yeah, that politician's done this. And it's like, it's so just encompassing and just sort of grinds you down. And But... You can't control any of that stuff. There's nothing you can do to control that. So what's actually really sweet is, which I, I since discovered, is the circle of control. That's the stuff that you care about. That's the stuff that you give your energy to. Um, what's on it? In a green that I can't really read. Where you work, your attitude and enthusiasm, uh, what you leave behind, like your legacy, what you create. That's the important stuff, man. That's the really important stuff. All this, and the beauty is, it's relatively to turn that all off because you just turn the news off. Like, I don't watch news anymore. I can't, I can't handle it. I just literally can't handle it. It's too much. And when I got here, I was like, oh, maybe I'll see what's happening in the, in the news in, in, in Canada. Okay, I'll, t I'll try and be educated. And then it was like, nope. It was just like, so-and-so killed in a crash. So-and-so this. Politicians on this. It was, and, and then I since discovered it's literally the same everywhere. It's, you're, you're meant to care about this stuff. And it's just so distracting. It's so really, really, really distracting. So I would really encourage you to to use the circle of control and to just care about the stuff that you can control and the stuff that you can mould and shift and shape and don't worry about that stuff. It's nonsense. You'd be far happy for it, I promise. Um, and then that also filters into a little bit what I, what I sort of said earlier is, is this quote which I absolutely love. The reason we struggle with insecurity is that we compare our behind the scenes with everyone else's highlights reel. Really. That's totally true. Instagram is a case in point because you look at you look at anyone that you follow and just anyone that you look up to and you're like, man, they're doing this cool thing. Look where they are, look what they're doing. And you just go, mm. you know, but it's like, that's their highlights real, man. That's edited, that's curated. That's, you're not going to, you're not going to put forward a, a totally true, <laughs> a totally true persona. I mean, you are and you're not. I mean, that's a beautiful thing that obviously things like Twitter and Instagram, it's very instant. You, you get an insight into people's lives. But also, you know, don't forget that it is still curated, whether it's conscious or not. That You know, you, you want to put forward something that puts you in a good light. So it's actually really nice to remember that, I think, that when you just look at someone else's stuff and you just go, oh, you know, don't worry about it. It's fine. You know, you just get, get on with it. Again, your circle of control, Get on with what you want to get on. And so, I want to share a few, a few points, a few things. Oh yeah, <laughs> um, and there's this thing, right? So, when you grow up, right, sort of through education and stuff. I don't know what the education system's like here, but it's very much to get you to a job, and it's never really implied that your job will be fun, is it? It's like it's work, and it's called work. And for some reason, as we get older, work is associated with drudgery. It's like, it's a menial task that must be completed. And no one ever really, especially not careers advisors along the way, said, but you do realize that you can go and work and create and, and do things that will make you happy and you will enjoy. Never, ever was said to me. And it's like, I just really believe that it, it should be enjoyed and not enjoyed. Like there, there is, it's totally possible to do that. But the caveat, I'm talking about caveats, is also, I mean, this is the best gift ever in the world. Imagine going to work and being like, yes, I'm in a massive, flipping, amazing robot today. Look, I really, I just really like that. That steezy sort of like, yeah, man. <laughs> I could watch this for hours. How long have we got? I've got a... But the point of the point, the point is, the point is the caveat of, um, 
I realize we are so friggin' lucky. So, 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 so lucky. And I don't take that lightly because we were just saying in the speaker room, they're like, this, like, this isn't work. This isn't difficult. This isn't laborious. Like, people who built this room, the people that put this flipping stage together, these lovely people that are doing an incredible job here, that is work. That is real, real work. We just float about and go, oh, do you want a solution to your creative problem? <laughs> Like, let's be real, that's not real, right? So it's keeping that in mind. I find it really, really important. And when you just know that really you are just making nice things and making, making pretty things, and, but, but then also the power of that, that you can connect with people and the power that that inherently has. And when you just sort of know that, but also know that, but it doesn't really matter. I find, I just, I, I find that, for me, that sort of drives me. It's like never, never forget that, that we are lucky enough that we can enjoy work and not enjoy it. Because... You know, 99% of people, real, <laughs> real work. It probably looked as just like a bunch of jerks. So, you know, it's, it's, I, I find it's really important to remember that. Um, <laughs> second best gift in the world. If you really, deep down, want to be a ham covered in pineapples, then just, just do the change. Just make it happen, man. Danny did it. Danny does it anyway. <laughs> So weird. I don't know why this is. I don't know. Um, but the point is that sometimes, again, if, if things aren't the way that you want them to be, if things aren't working out for you, it's really easy just to get stuck in a rotten moan and, and just just let it grind you down, and then you grind other people down, and then you just you're just stuck in a rut. And I know it's not easy. And again, the caveat is with all of this that all of this is is difficult stuff to change. But be the change you want to see. Don't moan about it. Don't go, oh, I wish this was like this. Whether that's actually your workplace. Oh, I kind of wish it was more open to this or I wish that this happened this way. Like, you, you do it then. You be the change that you want to see. Just don't wait for someone else to do it. You do it. And again, the caveat is it might take years. You might just keep butting up against it and it's frustrating and it's, again, it's not easy, but if you can be the change agent, be the change agent because you'll have done the change. How amazing is that? It's like, it works both ways. Yeah, it's a hard, you know, it's an awful lot of work, but you could be the one that changes things and makes them better. So, you know, be Danny and change into a hand pineapple. Cool. The other one is, uh, is, I kind of, like, what happens next? That's what I'm a bit worried about. We don't see the end of the gif, but it just is in there forever. Sometimes, whether you've not, you've got the best job, and I genuinely, dearly, dearly love my job. I don't always get the same creative satisfaction that I'm seeking. I, I maybe want to do more film stuff, and you know that isn't my job, so I'll go home and do it. Like, it's 24 hours in the day. Now, I know anyone with kids is looking at me right now going, there's not. <laughs> there's really not. And, and I know, again, there's a caveat of everyone's situation is different, but we still all have the same amount of time. So... You know, you don't stop being creative at 5 p.m., at 6 p.m. You know, go home, have a bit of food, say hello to your loved ones, and then go and make something. Make something with them. Go and, like, there is still plenty, plenty of time to, to try and find it. And it's hard, and it's difficult, and it's tiring. But you've just got to seek it. If you're not getting it, seek it elsewhere. Again, you know, it sort of comes back to the being the change agent as well. It's like, you've got to do it, man. You've got to find the time. You've got to change that you want to change because no one else is going to, you know. And it's really... It's hard because, you know, you, if you get locked into a job, you get locked into something, a repetitive cycle that you're not enjoying. It is hard, and it's hard to find the energy. That's a difficult bit. It's hard to find round two, to, to, to come home after a long, hard day and be like, right, okay. You know, that's really difficult to find, but try. Try, like the cat trying to find the bottom of that bar. I don't know. Now, this is another one. If you can be original, well done, because... That's incredibly, incredibly, incredibly hard. Now, I'm only saying this. I'm sure if you are a true, unique visionary, this, this slide is bullshit. <laughs> but I have never really made anything original, really. Like, it's, it's nigh on impossible, too. And if you can, incredible. This does not apply to you at all. But for the majority of... of if it's just so damn hard to create anything truly original, it's, it's sort of less worrying about, oh, I can't do that because it's been done before. It, it's, it's still doing it, but it's being honest. If you can't be original, be honest. Have that... I'm not saying rip people off, 
I'm saying just be true to you and just, just go, okay, well, I know this has sort of been done before, but maybe I'm going to put my spin on it because you're unique as an individual. That is true. You know, you are original as, as, a, as a human being. So whether you like it or not, you will put a different sort of spin on things and you will take it forward. So, so it's sort of like, yeah, if you, if you can't, if, if you know it's like, oh, I'm not going to be the first person ever to do X, then be the first person ever to do X actually in your style or whatever. So again, don't let, let that hang you up. Don't, all of these little bits, it's like, they're, they're these constant barriers, aren't they, in sort of creation where you're like, oh, I'm not original and oh, I don't have the time and oh, I'm not tired and da 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 da. You just got to like kick the shit out of them and just go forward. Sorry for doing a swear. I don't like doing a swear. I'm trying to be good. Um, right, that's graph. Craft. Craft is, is kind of like graph. Sounds like the same as well. But it's just, it's, it's, it's making sense of it. It's spending the time honing your craft and, and getting better and better. And I came across this amazing term and this amazing gif. <laughs> Thing is, right, well, first of all, I only noticed this last night. It's props to who, who the parent wearing a Tommy Hilfiger shirt. Nice. Nice, man. I haven't seen one of them in a long time. Um, I could be wrong because we can't see all angles, but it looks like there's quite a bit of space to the left and to the right of that tree. <laughs> just gravitates towards it. I like that. Um, but the point is, autodidacticism, amazing word, is literally self-learning. It's teaching yourself stuff. It's taking it upon yourself and just bettering yourself. And it just sounds good, doesn't it? It sounds cool. Um, but I'm really into that. I think, again, it's, you know, if things finish at 6 o'clock and you do or don't get training at, at work or for whatever reason, or you're just self-employed, but you need to find the time to learn, you know, just, just make time for it. I saw these gifts recently by um, a guy called Paul, Paul Roberts or Paul Robertson. You probably saw the latest thing he did, which was an incredible 16-bit um, recreation of the Simpsons intro. Mind-blowing, super, super cool. And I stumbled across his work because I dug deeper after seeing that clip. And it's just like, I, I kind of have no words. <laughs> I think there's a, there's a little kitten that bursts out of someone's stomach at some point. Hang on. Ugh. I love it. It's just so much going on, but it ignited this exciting world for me, and it was it was pixel art, and it's something I always loved, something I'd always, you know, just associate with being a kid and playing video games and stuff. And I just I, I was not any good at it, but I just wanted to get involved, so I just started teaching myself. Just I don't know how how do you do it? Just fire up Photoshop, make thirty two by thirty two pixels thing, and just start playing, and just learning. You know, I'm just sort of ripping off things I love from my favorite rap albums to. Or do Thanos from Marvel World and just, just stuff, just stuff, just, just for learning. And I don't know where it's going to go, but I'm learning. I'm learning a new technique. I'm learning a new skill. I'm learning a new discipline. It's like like minimalist graphic design because how do you scale this stuff down to 32 by 32? You know, in the age of we're using massive retina displays, it's really nice for when your canvas is about that big. It's really cool. So I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with it. I'd love to incorporate more stuff and actually do like a proper professionally job with it, but I don't know, I don't know. Oh, I did make a special one as well, I made a special one for you guys last night, with a special blingy sheen as well, woo! Yeah, I figured if I just make a maple leaf, everyone would be happy. <laughs> um, but it's just like, I don't know, I don't know where it's going, but I, I like that, and I like, I like when it then transcends into doing lots of different things. And being a polymath is a, a term I absolutely love, it's, I, See, it's really romantic. It's this term that, that, that just basically means being, a, being, uh, a, being an expert in lots and lots of different disciplines. Now, I could never, ever, ever be a true polymath, but I'm really excited by the romanticism of it. I would like to at least try to, to um, summon some, some polymath vibes, you know? You know, like Leonardo da Vinci and the Turf were are famous for, for being a polymath just because, you know, he would design a helicopter and then a building and then this and then that, you know, all sorts of different stuff. And, and there's this project that I've been involved in recently that's just taken in so many different directions that are new for me and are just so really exciting to try and put them, to try and use different skills and figure out where it's going to go. There's this project called Gromit Unleashed in Bristol two years ago that saw 80 five foot tall Gromit statues, which were white, given to different artists um, to paint and customize, which were then put on a public arts trail for 10 weeks and then they were auctioned off for, for children's charity. It was all raising money for sick children in hospitals. So just an incredible thing to be involved in, to begin with. And what a different skill set to, to apply. And I knew that I could do graphic design, but I hadn't... I can paint a bit. You'll see at the art battle tomorrow. 
can't really paint, but um, you know, I'll sort of give it a go. Um, but I figured I could use graphic design as a as a as a sort of skill, and I would try and cover cover the body in it in illustrated graphic design facts about Ardman and Bristol and filmmaking process and stuff like that. And so it's just an incredible opportunity. Thought I was just so lucky to be involved. Anyway, I, I applied like everyone else did because there's a lot of people wanting to do this and was lucky enough to be chosen. Just an amazing experience. Sold for twenty nine thousand pounds, which I've never sold anything for twenty nine quid. <laughs> It was the most emotional, humbling, incredible evening for, for, for that to happen. And it was just lovely that I knew it was raising money for children. But then, because I'd sort of really just been enthusiastic about the projects and really wanted to be involved and do things, like they, they asked, would you do actually a special version a year later to celebrate what happened, celebrate the amount of money that was raised, celebrate what actually happened with the project? Which was, again, a huge honor. Was, oh, yes, of course, of course, of course. So I covered this one in Illustrated Facts and Graphics about that year, about the facts, and inversed it and made it gold and pink instead of pink and gold. And I just love gold and pink. Why not? Um, and that was really lovely. And then that actually meant I made two. I made a twin because one lives in the um, charity store in the home in Bristol. One lives within Armand. And so by this point, I'd gone from never having done any giant public dog sculptures to have done three. And it was just... Every point, I just never took it for granted. I just, just was uh, just the most humbling, lovely thing to be involved in. And you're just learning the whole time. Like, the technique was mad. I would design them in vector graphics, and then what happens is they get given to you on vinyl. They're laser-cut on vinyl, but it's literally, that's what, on the left, that's it. it. You can barely see what the graphic is. You then have to use a scalpel to manually weed out every single letter and every single bit of negative space, which is... Not that easy when you've just decided to go, I'll just put loads of text in it. I'll just make sure there's loads of A's and O's and R's and things that have tiny little holes in the middle. But the whole time, it's like, this is so mental. <laughs> but I love it. I love it. What an incredible thing. You know, you've got to focus on that, that end goal to... It's for children, for God's sake. And also, just what an incredible thing. You know, I'm, I, in my head, I'm still that that young upstart from, from Leicester in the Midlands not being too great at anything. So to have these opportunities, you never, ever, ever want to squander. And then that moved on because they then did a Hong Kong version of this. It's like, well, do you want to be involved? Oh, my God, yes, oh, my God, yes. I want to make a mech, like a mech-inspired sort of thing. So I made a few graphics and made it out in Hong Kong. And then they made a special version, which I can only show you, um, which was four meters flipping tall. <laughs> Like a proper met, and it's like so. Starting this whole thing of I would just love to be involved. Any anything I can do, I would be love to, to. You know, just anything I can do to help. To then go, oh my flipping god! You know, it's just so amazing and so exciting. But it just pushes you on, doesn't it? Whenever you have those have those those things, you just push on and you want to go further and further and further. And then it's and then it's 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 turned into this like polymathematic sort of world of where then it's then gone full circle and we're making toy versions. Again, it's all raising money for kids, but that's lovely because I get to. I'd say, oh, can I design the packaging as well? And can I do a special version? So I sold special versions of the toys that were signed and numbered, and I got to design digitally numbered cards in a little pack. Just because if you can, do it. Especially now, super cheap to get stuff printed, made, created. And you can make a difference to people because you're giving it that personal, personal touch. That's the beautiful thing about being creative. You can just make it. You can make something unique to you, actually. You can make original things because it's coming from you. So that's been really nice, and so that's sort of perpetuated. Then the second project, which is two years later, they're, they're taking Sean the Sheep, making giant statues, and I was just dying to be involved in this because I loved it, loved the first one so much. But because I'd made such a song and dance about it, going, oh, I'll do anything you want me to do, anything, anything, it was really lovely. I got an invite this time, so I was asked to be part of it. And it was just like, you then want to surpass everything you've done before, and you just want to go forwards, and you just want to get excited. And so I was like, I know, I'll teach myself sign writing. How hard can that be? Gee, there's the reason why there's a whole industry is <laughs> really bloody hard. Oh, and it's like, oh, I know. I'll just make sure it's on a, an undulated curved surface because I'm pretty sure that's easy. And it was so frustrating and so heartbreaking. And, oh, you'd, you know, you'd, you'd be like, right, okay, this is the line, this is the line. It's black, can't get this wrong. And you go, oh, and then you do it. And it'd be perfect. And you'd be like, and you go, right, next one. Every other one, man, all the time. Just, but what, you know, I now, I'd actually quite like, I'd really enjoy to do, to do it more. And then, then thought, oh, I know, if I'm going to put gold in it, let's have real gold. But I'll get, so that's 24 carat real gold leaf. So how hard can that be? 
turns out there's another industry based on this as well. What was it with industries? Jesus. Um, so I, they, they send this amazing book. I bought the kit that had all the gold and the book, and it was this really old book of um, like how to do gilding. It's like, perfect, this is what I need to learn. I need to read from the masses. I got two pages in it. It was so boring. <laughs> So I just threw that and just literally just whacked it on. <laughs> and it worked, man. It worked. It, it stayed. It's not scratched off or anything. I don't, a real gold gilder would be like, that's the most awful job I've ever seen in my life. But it looks gold and shiny. So, and then that's, that's moved on into a second one. So I'm doing a second, or I actually just finished a second Sean, which was actually all about Bristol this time. So that was all based on a, on a barber shop, like old-fashioned barber's thing, because barber sheep, brilliant pun, why not? Uh, I liked a few groans there. Oh. Um, and then uh, the second one is more like my first ones, which was using graphic design. This is all about Bristol. And so I've covered it in like famous illustration faces of Bristol. And, and then I didn't know where it was going. It turns out this is in front of St. Paul's Cathedral, which is a huge, beautiful monument in central London. And behind him is the Tate Modern, which is a really famous art gallery. And it's like, again, I could have never done this stuff. You know, it's just... It, I just, I don't ever want to squander that or take that, take that for granted. But then it's w gone full circle because I've got, I, I, we ended up at work doing the, the official app and the official website and stuff that I got to design and direct. So been involved in all these different facets of it. And it's just been fantastic or a huge learning process for me and just lovely to be, you know, I, I, I understand things differently because in the app I know actually how important it is to, um, to, to locate a statue or for an artist to find this information or whatever. So it's nice to have those different, different views. Anyway, I'm going to rattle through because I've got, you know, got things to say. Lastly, being daft. Um, being daft, being silly. I just really think it's important to remember that we are just silly. And a friend of mine um, is a CBBC, which is a children's channel, BBC children's channel in, in England, um, a TV presenter, and he had this art show, and he's like, do you, do you want to be, be involved? It's like, oh my God, yeah. Like, you, you have to be really silly and take the mickey out of yourself, and you probably get covered in stuff all the time. It's like, oh, yeah, why would you not? Like, I have no pride. <laughs> I, have no, I have no qualms in just make, looking like an idiot and being silly. And it was just an incredible, incredible process. I, uh, if you don't say yes, well, I would have never got the chance to be on a kid's TV show set and see how it all works and, and see how it all pans out. And it was just amazing fun, covered in paint and, and just... We had a scene with um, the second biggest, two second biggest dogs in the world. It was, it was bonkers. It was just mad. And I didn't know what was going on, but it was that silliness, that fun, of poking fun at yourself and not taking it too seriously. And, and I actually do like graphic design as well. Sometimes I just make graphics for graphics sake. So I made it. I was really excited when the Godzilla film came out. So I made a Godzilla graphic just based on just what I wanted it to be. And then sometimes I just then make weird little mashups that I don't know if anyone likes Godzilla and the Wu-Tang Clan and specifically knows that ODB song, but it makes me laugh and I like doing it. And it's like, it's just doing those things for yourself. And then sometimes I like taking it further <laughs> and then mixing it up at work. And it's like, this is for no reason whatsoever. I love the fact that that's got the biggest clap. <laughs> that took about five minutes. <laughs> um, but, then, but then it's like, it's actually working and then so just because I did the silly stuff, actually, I'm working with the actress Sally Hawkins, who is in the film, for a collaboration with the print, which I can't show you yet. But it's, so it's like just being silly and putting it out there. You never know what's going to happen. And then sometimes I work with bands as well. And this is a band, a metal band called August Burns Red that loves Venture Time. And it's like you just do it for fun, for silly, because you never know what's going to lead. And I also like to do stuff like that. As I just call them one-nighters, spend time, literally just go, right, I have this silly idea, it's for no other reason to make myself laugh, or just because I want to see it, I want to see it exist. Just spend an evening, don't give yourself any more time than that, one night, get it done. And then you, you've got a new piece, you've got a new thing you made, and you can, you can move back onto the sensible stuff if you need to, but you know, give yourself that time to expend that energy and to, 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 have, to have fun with it. And then just, just sort of use that same method and go forwards and, and, and try and learn new stuff. So, like, I tried to paint. I did this thing called Free Art Fridays where I just draw and paint on little pieces of wood and leave them out of the city just to, for people to have. I never knew if they got kicked to pieces or chucked in the bin or <laughs> whatever, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just put the things out there and, and, and just get it out of your brain onto a thing and then, and then out in the world. And then also use your, like, your, the things that you love as your subjects all the time. This is my... Uh, dog Arnie, who's a retired ex ex racing ground, who I just adore, and just I just use him as a subject all the time. Like, just don't be afraid to just use what makes you what makes you 
you is you. Add that as a, as a, as a tagline for Twitter. <laughs> what makes you you is you. But what I mean by that is it's, it's your unique. You, even if you do exactly the same as someone else, it's still your spin on it. And it just, putting, by putting your own personality and stuff in it, just, it gives it your, your sense. So I use Arnie on everything. From our, This is a, a corner of our, our RSVPs for our wedding. We've got Arnie where you put the stamp, and so I like making pixel art out of him. And the, I tried to make a, 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 an art installation with the zoetrope, so I used Arnie running, and then this is going to be a brand that I'm starting with my wife-to-be. And it's just like, just use it for everything. Just get obsessed and have those thumbprints. It's like having that, those visible thumbprints of you as a human being in your work. But all of this silly stuff... All of the silliness is because I think it's about being positive and using that nice, rad energy and just being the person that you, being the person that you want to see in everyone else, having that positive, like, nice vibe. And there's this amazing, amazing fable, um, Aesop's fable. And basically, the, if you've not heard it, it's that the sun and the wind have this contest to see who can get the man um, walking down on earth um, to take his jacket off. And the sun's really arrogant. Uh, the, the wind, sorry, is really arrogant and brash, and he's just like, I can get him to take his coat off really, really quickly. And he huffs and he puffs and he blows, and he's sort of angry and, 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 and violent in his in his ways, and just sort of just trying to get him to take off his his, his his jacket. But what happens when the wind does that is the guy just puts his jacket on more, and he just carries on walking. But then the sun just calmly, just nice, mellow way, just sort of just goes, just radiates his heat, and the dude just is like, oh, sick. And just takes his jacket off, steezy, and has a little, little sleepy lie down. And the point is, it's like, don't you, like, it's so much energy to be negative and to be da 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 and to, to, to perpetuate that, that sort of feeling and this is shit and that's shit and just be like that. But just be nice and be the sun and be like, just do that. And it's just, everything's good and lovely. And it's just, it's perpetuating that feeling of just being, just being positive. And I think what it comes back to for me is that we, we have this unique, power to make people feel something in the work that we create, in the things that we do, the way we conduct ourselves. Design, creativity, art, interaction, technology, we can make people feel things. We can make them have emotions. That's an incredibly, incredibly lucky and fortunate responsibility that we have. And we have to make sure that we exercise that and, and, and do it right and, and use our energy in the, in the right way, you know? Because for me, that, all of that, all of this is totally well worth grappling for. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you have an amazing three days. Bye.